we fighting for here on Declare Your Independence? With me, Ernest Hancock. How about some uh, freedom, truth, justice? I don't know that uh, we used to be the American way. I have no idea what that is anymore. One of the people that's been doing this for years, and I've had on my radio program uh, when I first started radio back in 03, I remember Adventures in Legal Land. Mark Stevens is one of the most popular downloads that we ever had because I, I guess you're promoting it or something because, man, they were downloading that sucker big time. So go ahead and tell, you know, Mark Stevens, go ahead and tell me what you're talking about here while you're at Libertopia. Well, thanks for having me on again, Ernie, and I appreciate the opportunity to be on and looking forward to uh, doing a show from the Freedoms Phoenix studio. You know, we're going to, I tell you what we're going to be doing. Mark Stevens is going to be, it's why we created Freedom's Phoenix Studio, is for people such as Mark to make use of it. And this, he's going to be doing his show live on Saturdays. We're doing that, and he's going to be uh, going live from Libertopia here using our Conrex setup and everything. We're going to leave it for you. So you're going to be doing your show from here tomorrow uh, libertopia oh and you're going to have some quality man we got some got good equipment here so you're going to be styling so tell me about uh how you got in the movement and you know what's your claim to fame man why are you why are you speaking here at libertopia well uh because i know sky i, I just know sky not that i know anything uh, but i got started in this because i i wrote a book called adventures in legal land and you know wanted to teach people to stand up to these politicians you know basically traffic tickets and tax stuff and you were the first one with an AM station, AM show that had me on when you were in Scottsdale, the Scottsdale studio. Yeah. And, uh, you know, from there, people just, you know, they started buying the book and they started doing it. And so it was one thing for me to be doing it. It was another thing when hundreds and hundreds of people are replicating what is in the book. And uh, so the more people were doing that, uh, the more people were more uh, courageous, if you will, to do it themselves. They say, well, they needed someone to just kind of help them, you know, walk them through it so that they knew what they could do. See, what happened was in 03, when we started doing the show, we were the first and only, I, I know then, certainly any major media market, on the air two hours a day, morning drive, every day, Monday through Friday. And it was like, what the heck happened here? How'd that happen? And we would have people like you on and say, look, here are people challenging the man. Here, here's, you know, you, this is information you need to know. You do, you you don't want to go into this unarmed with no information, even on simple things like traffic tickets. You need to understand what you're dealing with. Well, Mark's book, Adventures in Legal Land, opened up the eyes of a lot of people, and it was a big start for a lot of activism. Tell us about how that grew, because, it, I mean, all of a sudden, you become an icon across the country for this kind of stuff. I don't know about that. I mean, I hear about you. You know how many times I get people telling me, you need to get Mark Stevens on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Well, it, it happens when, when, you, when you see other people doing it. This is not about just complaining about the problem, but you're actually doing something. Because it's not just traffic, it's taxes, drug stuff. It's basically living your life free and not asking for permission. And when someone sees someone else doing that or other people doing that, it gives them more backbone. Right? It gives them more courage to actually get off the fence and do that. They know instinctively that taking things that, you know, that aren't yours is wrong. It's another thing to put that into action and start living that way. And so uh, it empowered a lot of people where they didn't have to learn eight years of law school, uh, you know, eight years of, of higher education to go into court. They could just ask a few questions, knowing the, a little bit of the foundation, and turning a juror's doctorate on his head. Being able to ask two questions to a prosecutor and having to withdraw the charges. It was very empowering. Like, hey, I don't need to go through all this. Mark did it. His, and then people were calling the radio show. And on a regular basis, I think last week, two people called up. They had ta tickets thrown out. That's very empowering to people. It's like, get, you know, give me a solution that I can do. And I don't have to waste, what, six years of school doing it. You know, one thing that you see when this happens is that it's more than just whether that individual is going to prevail or not. It is a demonstration to the system that people just aren't sitting down and taking it anymore. They are actually engaged in this. And over the last year, we've seen that a lot, especially down in, in Phoenix, as you know, so many people are coming by the hundreds are coming. They're learning. They're going to classes like yours and other people putting on things to where they're starting to challenge, you know, their foreclosures. They're challenging the documents on these uh, loans. They're challenging the big, big, big banks in court, putting their chest out and saying, hey, man, here I am. I read Ventures in Legal Land. But, you know, so these kind of things, just this type of confidence that they're willing to engage them 
It's having an impact. It was getting so overwhelming that they had to address it. And now as people start to look at what's really going on in the law, it's going, oh, I get it. The banks get a special law. They're treated differently. <laughs> and which is what you were trying to say a lot of the time yourself is saying, look, man, you know, you can go up there equal, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to treat you the same. Right. And I was looking more at things that they could not get around because a lot of times because doing so many radio shows where they were not like you, where they were liberty minded, because most of them are not like you were the you, you were the ground. I mean, you were the first one. I was like, great. In Phoenix, I could turn on the radio and hear a libertarian, a real one, uh, not the pseudo ones that they had at the time and they have now. Uh, but um, it was no matter what the law said, it didn't matter. And it still doesn't matter. It's to be able to go in and challenge the perceptions that they're trying to put over, which are false anyway. So regardless of how they change the law, what it says, it doesn't matter. We challenge application. So regardless of what the law says, if you can't prove it applies to me, good luck. You can't make a case. Well, how successful is that? Really, I mean, you, you hear a lot of good stories and you know, a lot of people saying, but I mean, what percentage is that? If we look just at traffic, which is what I handle mostly, I handle mostly traffic and taxes, I would say for traffic, we've established, and I work with quite a few people. It's not just me and a few people here. Uh, we have a 75% track record on traffic tickets being thrown out because the police officer doesn't show up. 75% of the time when you file the motion or demur that I have available based on there's no cause of action. Uh, the rest of the time that they do show up, the witness is usually declared incompetent, which I can teach anyone to do that in about a minute. Uh, then the rest of them are thrown out. So I would say there's probably a good 85, 90 percent success rate of people getting these tossed out. And these are people with no legal training at all, which, of course, I have none. So it's not like I'm coming from a standpoint like Butler Schaefer. Uh, it, it doesn't require that. So regular people like us, without the oodles of papers on the wall and, and you know from universities and what we're everyday people like us are doing it on a regular basis and so uh yes yeah, some people in certain areas we're getting a reputation where uh they don't want to give us hearings anymore well you know that's one thing i've seen this happen before i've been uh going to these kind of meetings had presentations and everything since i've been involved in this since 88 so throughout the 90s you know i mean there was all kinds of the patriot we're gonna do whatever and what I saw is that early on, they were successful. They got it. And then they, then they trained a special kind of judge. They call them patriot judges or something. And then they'll bring that in and uh, um, deny, 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 you know, whatever they're going to do. And, it, and then they even get to the point where they just change civil procedure. They change the law or they change, they, they put you in a special court. They send you a special, they do that because they are desperate. They're feeling the weight of the people just, and, and it's more than them learning the system. What they really learn is it doesn't matter what the system says. They're going to do what they want with the system. That has an impact, too. Well, that's true, and that's why I always go, and I don't try to get them to contradict the law, because it's going to change. It's going to mean whatever they want it to mean. What I do is I get them to commit to their own opinion. Am I entitled to a fair trial? And then I take it from there. I don't need the law, the Constitution, this or that. I need his opinion, and because I, I know and when I ask him a few more questions, he's going to contradict that. And, you know, and also addressing uh, deny, deny, denied, one of the things that we're able to do is get a cross-examination stopped in two questions. All I have to do to prevail on appeal, which we've got a better than 90% rate on appeal, if we have to, very few people do, uh, all I have to do is show that there was a denial of cross. I don't have to show prejudice, just that he did it. So most of the uh, appeals are thrown out in our favor because we showed a denial of cross. So what actually so explain works, that. What's a denial of cross? Well, a denial of cross examination, before they can find you guilty, they have to have a witness. That's still part of the system. Okay, they haven't trashed that. And uh, you put the police officer on the stand, and you ask him a couple questions. And two questions real quick. I know we don't have much time. Uh, you ask if there was a valid cause of action filed against you. And the cop has to say yes. I mean, even the judge knows he can't spin that one. After he says yes, then all you say is, well, okay, how many elements are in a valid uh, uh, cause of action? And then the judge and the prosecutor will declare the witness incompetent. That requires the judge, no discretion involved, that requires the judge to strike the testimony. So if you have to appeal it, you have two contradicting statements. The witness incompetent took it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why you call it Adventures in Legal Land. <laughs> Give a website out where they can go get more information. MarkStevens.net, and yes, we're doing the No State Project live here. 
with Freedoms Phoenix uh, Studio Equipment. It's Mark, M-A-R-C. Yes. You know, markstevens.net. And tomorrow, what time's your show tomorrow? 1 to 3 Pacific time. 1 to 3 Pacific. Go to Mark stevens.net and he'll, he'll fill in for whatever you wouldn't get from us you go find out what he has to say and he, you never know what might happen here oh. all of a sudden you know freedom might be declared or something <laughs> it's libertopia hey it's been a great time spending with you guys and we'll try and get you on the road a little bit this uh from california next week you guys stay tuned pay attention we're fighting for freedom you should too especially for yourself have a good day be free